Hello, this is Mrs. McCurry, and today we're going to be talking about the Earth in space. All right, sorry about that. Anyway, so um, first we're just going to talk about its location in the solar system, and hopefully you know where the planets are, but just in case. Um, in the center of our solar system, we have our sun, and then uh, based on distance from the sun, this is not a scale drawing by any means, um, so we have the Sun, then we have Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Um, in the article about the solar system, there's all sorts of very interesting facts about um, the different planets, like um, how far they are away from the Sun, how long their orbit is, and um, what would happen if their orbit changed, all sorts of things like that. It's very interesting. Not exactly the most important thing in the world, though. Um, some of the things that um, are good to take into, to, to keep in your mind are, um, well, um, our Earth is, the distance from our Earth to the Sun, we talked in the, uh, earlier this week, that it's uh, 93 million miles from the Earth to the Sun. Now, that is a very awkward number to deal with when you're talking um, 93 million miles, and since that's a a unit that we are comfortable with. We understand it sort of and as much as you can understand 93 million miles. But you know, we have a frame of reference for it. So we have renamed it one astronomical unit. And so when you see this uh, label AU, we're talking about astronomical units. Again, one being the distance from the Earth to the Sun, so 93 million miles. And they talk about all the astronomical units from the sun to all the planets, noting then at the farthest end of the spectrum that from the sun to Neptune is 30 astronomical units. So it's so from the sun to the Earth is a 30th of the distance from the sun to Neptune. And so that just really gives you an idea of how grand a scale we're talking about with all of this. And uh, Back in the day, there was Pluto, but, you know, now Pluto has been reclassified, and it, it's a dwarf planet. Um, there are also different, uh, you know, that we've got the meteor, meteor belt between Mars and Jupiter, and all sorts of things like that. Now, um, some there are some things that are really, really telling about how the solar system is laid out. Um, the solar system you hopefully know is in the Milky Way galaxy um, but we are not we're not in the center which is good because there's a lot of radiation there um, as stars are being created and exploding and all sorts of things and just you know the proximity to other stars there's a lot more radiation than what we have so if our star were closer to the center that would create that would be, be um, put it in a an area that's really not uh, conducive for life. Also, our star is placed kind of in like its own little bubble. You know, our, our nearest star neighbor is Alpha Centauri, but again, that's I believe 50 light years away. So you know, if we were so we're anything that any light that we see from Alpha Centauri takes us. You know, we're looking at what that star looked like 50 years ago. So we really are kind of isolated now, of course, not in the grand scheme of space, but, you know, for being in a galaxy, we're fairly isolated. Um, so what that does is it puts us in our own little, it gives us like a radioactive shielding so that we're not in areas that have too much radioactivity for life to be sustained. Also, Earth is placed in, you know, again, just the right distance away from the sun to, you know, not be overwhelmed with radioactivity from the sun. It's also at just the right distance between the sun and Jupiter that, again, we've got the right balance between um, heat and light and radi radiation. And um, also, because Jupiter is so large, even though in my drawing it's not a circle, sorry about that, um, 
computers are not easy to draw on. Even though um, it's it because it's so large, it's going to attract a lot of you know meteor activity. It's going to attract a lot of comet activity, and that helps prevent any um, asteroids or comets from colliding with the Earth. And then on the other side, we have the Sun that's also drawing a lot of that. We also have the moon <clears throat> that is is very close but it is big enough that it does kind of act as like a catcher's mitt for all the things that gets that get pretty close to earth. So it just, you know, looking around, it really shows us that we are in the perfect location. We're in the perfect location for life to exist. We have, you know, the right amount of heat and light from the sun. We're at the right um, distance of an orbit so that we have the season, so that we have that regulated temperature. We're at the right distance from other stars so we don't have too much radiation. We're at the right distance from the center of the galaxy so that we don't have too much radiation. And so all of that, you know, really just speaks of a plan, you know. Um, some of the other articles that we've read this week, you know, um, I think it was uh, the, the Issues Etc. podcast talked about evolution being just a product of circumstance and there's a situation but you know what life finds a way <laughs> and it'll happen but then you know as far as we can tell it hasn't happened anywhere else so to me it's not it's not even so much a question of well there isn't you know, human life anywhere else, or there isn't cat life anywhere else, or there isn't plant life anywhere else, because, you know, as um, Dr. Voss talks about, you know, all of these organisms on Earth have very similar DNA, so, you know, which makes sense, because we're all in the same place, and we all have relatively the same conditions to deal with, so it makes sense that we're made basically the same way. But, okay, so, say Mars is different, it's a different planet, um, it's got different circumstances, different amount of radiation, different amount of heat, different amount of light, different gravity, all that stuff. But if life is just going to find a way and all these things are just going to evolve, why isn't there anything? And, it, you know, and it's not even that, you know, there aren't cats or dogs or people or trees, but just that there's, there's nothing. It's just rocks and dirt and dust and wind. There's nothing alive in any form in any form, whether it looks like us, whether it's something we're used to or not. There's there's just nothing because if you're talking about evolution as just happenstance and just, you know, circumstance led to, you know, in this circumstance this was created. So in a different circumstance of a different planet, something different would be created. So I'm not even, you know, all concerned with you know, they need to be exactly like us, but there's just nothing. And, you know, that's something that is pointed out often as being kind of a flaw in, in that theory of evolution, a stumbling point, is that you're saying, you know, life can, can be created out of any circumstance, but we see all these other circumstances where life isn't being created. So it does kind of, it does kind of point to the idea that the earth is special and there's, more to it than just random chance. We also talked about the nebula hypothesis and um, this over here is a spiral galaxy, just go with it. Okay, so the nebula hypothesis states that, um, so we have this spiral galaxy, we have a supernova, we have something um, where planets are being created. And with uh, evolutionist theory, you know, we can evolve people, we can evolve plants and animals, we can also evolve planets. So in evolutionist theory, we've got like this, you know, they call it a boulder over here. And we've got a boulder over here, we've got a boulder over here. So what used to be the hypothesis, the nebula hypothesis, I guess it's still a hypothesis, is that these boulders were in these um, nebula. No, that's what it is. It's a nebula. Anyway, and as they were in the nebula, everything is swirling around and you get something that's the right size and it just, gravity takes over and starts to collect. Now what they've been finding is that actually when um, 
things are at the center of this nebula where they thought a lot of the planets were coming from because you know that's the gravitational center things are going to be drawn to that and so if gravity is just going to create a planet that would be where they would you know come out from but what they're seeing as they get more and more data is that as it gets to the center things are just going so quickly that it just kind of explodes and grinds up into dust and then just gets shot off into the nebula. Um, so what they're seeing, you know, if, if it were there for millions and millions of years, what they're seeing is that these planets really, A, are having a hard time forming on their own because if they're not just the right size, gravity won't take over enough and you'll just have a bunch of rocks bumping into each other, breaking each other into smaller pieces and then continuing being smaller pieces and not generating planets. So what they're seeing is that these planets would have to form much, much, much more quickly if they were being formed in nebula. Now, there's nothing to say that that's not what's happening. It's just showing that it's a much quicker process. It's not millions and millions of years. In some cases, it's hundreds of years or even less. Now, of course, again, we're talking many light years away, thousands if not millions of light years away. So there's really no way to watch it and time a planet being made. But it does definitely point to a much quicker creation instead of this evolution of, um, of planets. So again, you know, you, when you get that quicker creation, it just again points fingers back to God saying, well, yeah, it was quick. God just said it and there it was. And of course, you know, again, God created laws of the universe, not because he needed laws, but because he is an ordered God and his creation reflects him. And so, you know, he created this universe and it has certain laws like gravity and um, other things, um, you know, thermodynamics and things like that. But... Um, these laws are a reflection of him. So it's not, for me, it's not a stretch to see God working within natural laws. You know, we don't say that, you know, because gravity works, there is no God. There's gravity because of God. That's kind of how, more of how I see it. So I don't have too much of an issue saying that, okay, well, planets, new planets can be created because, you know, God created planets and I'm sure he would have, come up with a way for that to happen. Now, is that planet going to have a special sentient life that he, you know, created and looked after? Well, we don't really know, but probably not. At least that's, you know, my interpretation. But everything around us is just, again, pointing us to a God that created a world that has order and follows plans.